Love's arms are open to receive you and give you peace forever. That is a line from today's reading. This section today is called The Temple of the Holy Spirit. And it's from chapter 20, which is the vision of holiness. And this is A Course of Miracles. Temple of the Holy Spirit. The meaning of the Son of God lies solely in his relationship with his Creator. If it were elsewhere, it would rest on contingency, but there is nothing else. And this is wholly loving and forever. Yet has the Son of God invented an unholy relationship between him and his Father. His real relationship is one of perfect union and unbroken continuity. The one he made is partial, self-centered, broken into fragments, and full of fear. The one created by his Father is wholly self-encompassing and self-extending. The one he made is wholly self-destructive and self-limiting. Nothing can show the contrast better than the experience of both a holy and an unholy relationship. The first is based on love and rests on it serene and undisturbed. The body does not intrude upon it. Any relationship in which the body enters is based not on love, but on idolatry. Love wishes to be known, completely understood, and shared. It has no secrets, nothing that it would keep apart and hide. It walks in sunlight, open-eyed and calm, in smiling welcome and in sincerity so simple and so obvious it cannot be, it cannot be misunderstood. But idols do not share. Idols accept but never make return. They can be loved but cannot love. They do not understand what they are offered and any relationship in which they enter has lost its meaning. The love of them has made love meaningless. They live in secrecy, hating the sunlight and happy in the body's darkness, where they can hide and keep their secrets hidden um, along with them. And they have no relationships, for no one else is welcome there. They smile on no one, and those who smile on them they do not see. Love has no darkened temples where mysteries are kept obscure and hidden from the sun. It does not seek for power, but for relationships. The body is the ego's chosen weapon for seeking power through relationships, and its relationships must be unholy for what they are it does not even see. It wants them solely for the offerings on which its idols thrive. The rest is it merely throws away for all that it could offer is seen as value, valueless. Homeless, the ego seeks as many bodies as it can collect to place its idols in, and so establish them as temples to itself. The Holy Spirit's temple is not a body, but a relationship. The body is an isolated speck of darkness, a hidden secret room, a tiny spot of senseless mystery, a meaningless enclosure carefully protected yet hiding nothing. Here the unholy relationship escapes reality and seeks for crumbs to keep itself alive. Here it would drag its brothers, holding them here in its idolatry. Here it is, quote, safe, unquote, for here love cannot enter. The Holy Spirit does not build his temples where love can never be. Would he who sees the face of Christ choose as his home the only place in all the universe where it cannot be seen. You cannot make the body the Holy Spirit's temple, and it will never be the seat of love. It is the home of the idolater and of love's condemnation. For here is love made fearful and hope abandoned. Even the idols that are worshipped here are shrouded in mystery and kept apart from those who worship them. This is the temple dedicated to no relationships and no return. Here is the, quote, mystery, unquote, of separation perceived in awe and held in reverence. What God would have not, what God would have not be in here kept, quote, safe, uh, quote, safe, unquote, from him. Let's read that again. What God would have, 
have not be is here kept safe from him. But what you do not realize is what you fear within your brother and would not see in him is what makes God seem fearful to you and kept unknown. Idolaters will always be afraid of love, for nothing so severely threatens them as love's approach. Let love draw near them and overlook the body, as it will surely do, and they retreat in fear, feeling the seeming firm foundation of their temple begin to shake and loosen. Brother, you tremble with them. Yet what you fear is but the herald of escape. This place of darkness is not your home. Your temple is not threatened. You are an idolater no longer. The Holy Spirit's purpose lies safe in your relationship and not your body. You have escaped the body. Where you are, the body cannot enter, for the Holy Spirit has set his temple there. There is no order in relationships. They either are or not. An unholy relationship is no relationship. It is a state of isolation which seems to be what it is not. No more than that. The instant that the mad idea of making your relationship with God unholy seemed to be possible, all your relationships were made meaningless. In that unholy instant, time was born, and bodies made to house the mad idea and give it the illusion of reality. And so it seemed to have a home that held together for a little while in time and vanished. For what could house this mad idea against reality but for an instant? Idols must disappear and leave no trace behind their going. The unholy instant of their seeming power is frail as is a snowflake, but without its loveliness. Is this the substitute you want for the eternal blessing of the holy instant and its unlimited beneficence? Is the malevolence of the unholy relationship so seeming, powerf so, so seeming powerful and so bitterly misunderstood and so invested in a false attraction your preference to the holy instant which offers you peace and understanding? Then lay aside the body and quietly transcend it, rising to welcome what you really want. And from his holy temple, look you not back on what you have awakened from. For no illusions can attract the mind that has transcended them and left them far behind. The holy relationship reflects the true relationship the Son of God has with his Father in reality. The Holy Spirit rests within it in the certainty it will endure forever. Its firm foundation is eternally upheld by truth, and love shines on it with the gentle smile and tender blessing it offers to its own. Here the unholy instant is exchanged in gladness for the holy one of safe return. Here is the way to true relationships held gently open, through which you and your brother walk together, leaving the body thankfully behind and resting in the everlasting arms. Love's arms are open to receive you and give you peace forever. The body is the ego's idol, the belief in sin made flesh and then projected outward. This produces what seems to be a wall of flesh around the mind, keeping it prisoner in a tiny spot of space and time, beholden unto death, and given but an instant in which to sigh and grieve and, and die in honor of its master. And this unholy instant seems to be life, an instant of despair, a tiny island of dry sand, bereft of water and set uncertainly upon oblivion. Here does the Son of God stop briefly by, to offer his devotion to death's idols and then pass on. And here he is more dead than living. Yet it is also here he makes his choice again between idolatry and love. Here it is given him to choose to spend this instant paying tribute to the body or let himself be given freedom from it. Here he can accept the holy instant offered him to replace the unholy one he chose before. And here can he learn relationships are his salvation and not his doom. You who are learning this may still be fearful, but you are not immobilized. The holy instant is of greater value now to you than its unholy seeming counterpart, 
and you have learned you really want but one. This is no time for sadness, perhaps confusion, but hardly, hardly discouragement. You have a real relationship and it has meaning. It is as like your real relationship with God as equal things are like unto each other. Idolatry is past and meaningless. Perhaps you fear your brother a little yet. Perhaps a shadow of the fear of God remains with you. Yet what is that to those who have been given one true relationship beyond the body? Can they be long held back from looking on the face of Christ? And can they long withhold the memory of their relationship with their father from themselves and keep remembrance of his love apart from their awareness? All right, this section is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is again picking up this theme of the temple, the temple of the, the temple of God or the temple of the Holy Spirit. What is the temple? Oftentimes we speak of the body as our temple, right? I believe that actually is somewhere in the gospel, uh, in the New Testament. We'll have to look that up. Um, but this idea goes back, right? Um, we also have the the holy temple that, that stood in Jerusalem. And there's still remnants of it to this day. There's the Western Wall, also called the Kotel in Jerusalem in Jerusalem. Um, and there were there were two dis temples. One was destroyed by the Babylonians, the Persians, and the second by the Romans. The first one was like, I, I forget, 526 or 596 um, BCE. And the other one was 70 CE, it was, it was destroyed. The temple was the, the holy of where the holy of holies was the, it's the holy holy place of God the course um, and you could say that that Christianity in many ways or let's say Judaism more than Christianity because Christianity then came and and for the most part it it devised churches right and 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 in Judaism there were no longer, you know, that, that main temple, but there were synagogues. Um, now we have, then we have the idea, which, which has grown in, um, in the last 2000 years, it's grown in resonance for people, which is that the body is our temple. But the course is not um, completely happy with that idea, except as the, the body as seen through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, which is the body is a way for us to communicate, to share the love, to communicate the love of God with each other and to, and to, to bring each other, walk each other home through that sharing, through the sharing of love through the sharing of true communion that that is the, that is the body's only purpose according to the the course or you could say according to the holy spirit we talked about the gospel of john yesterday in the last video and i forgot to mention that the gospel of john really brings in the holy spirit in the second half of of the gospel Jesus starts to talk about how when he is gone, the Holy Spirit will be there, right? The Holy Spirit will be the guide, will be their guide, will be their, their, um, you know, it, it talks about the Holy Spirit in, in similar terms to how the Course does, right? So <clears throat> the Holy Spirit for the Course is basically the memory of God that we took us, took, took with us into the dream that we are currently in, dream of duality. So it's not God per se, but it is the voice that speaks for God. 
How does it speak for God? It is that, it is that inner voice. It is the st still small voice within ourselves that is ever reminding us of God's love and saying, are you ready yet? Are you ready to let go of what you think you know in favor of what is true knowledge? Are you ready to let go of your, your meager grip on what you think is real? The world of bodies in favor of what you really want, which is love. And let's also keep in mind that from the very beginning of the course, the, the words love and God are basically synonymous. Even in this section today, there's this line. It, just as much as it talks about God, God the Father here talks about love. God is love and love is God. There's no, there's no difference. So if you don't like the word God, you can use the word love. But let's read this one little part, which I kind of started with at the beginning. Um, here are the way to true relationships. Here is the way to true relationships held gently open, through which you and your brother walk together, leaving the body thankfully behind and resting in the everlasting arms. Whose everlasting arms? Love's arms are open to receive you and give you peace forever. It doesn't say God's arms. It says love's arms. Um, God is not a person. God does not have arms. Obviously, love does not have arms. So whose arms are they? That's just a figure of speech. That's, that's a, a metaphor, right? And it, it kind of harkens back to, back to the prodigal son story, which is that, that the son thinks that it can never return to God because it's not worthy and God wants to punish, punish him. But the reality is that God's, God the Father is, or God the King that the Son ran away from is just waiting for the Son to return with open arms, right? Ready to embrace the Son whenever the Son is ready to return. Whenever the Son realizes God is not angry, God does not want to punish, God does not even see anything any kind of problem whatsoever. It is only the son. This is all the son's doing. The son went away from God. The God, God did not go away from the son. <laughs> right? As Meister Eckhart said, you know, God is still at home. We have gone, it is we have, who have gone out for a walk. And now we can walk our brother home with us. And that is the way through, we can't get to God except through our brother. This is even in the Gospels. This, this, this theme is right there in the Gospels from the very beginning. Jesus was saying, you know, don't think you can get to God without how you treat and see your brother. You know, what you do to the least of these, you do to me. Right? So you can't, you can't judge your brother without judging yourself and without judging Jesus and without judging God and without that being in the way. So the temple is not the body. The, the relationship between you and your brother does not require the interference of bodies. And the body generally is an interference. It gets in the way. It, it, when we focus on the body, we forget our mind. We, we become mindless. We, we forget that we, we, we are ultimately minds and, and then ultimately spirit. When we make the body the idol, when we make the body the most important thing, which most of us do, we forget, we forget our minds and, and we make the illusion real. 
And it, it, it is, idol you know, what Jesus is saying, it is idolatry. Um, the holy temple is the remembrance of, you know, the, our, our, our eternal union, our eternal communion. That is the atonement principle, that we have never been separate from each other or from God. There was this tiny man idea, and Jesus mentions it in this section. He mentions the tiny man idea again. There was this tiny man idea that, that was the basis of the unholy relationship, right? That was, that was what started the whole madness that really snowballed and became a universe of insanity and suffering. And that is the idea the tiny mad idea that it is possible to be separate from God and from each other or separate from love because love is God. It's, it's a way of saying love is not real, right? I don't want love. It's like love saying, it's, it's almost funny, you know, it's like love saying I don't want love. So, uh, But, it, but the attraction of love for love is so strong that, that we're all going to, we all are going back. Um, we're all getting there at our own, in our own good time. And I think that's one of the most important things to remember here is that you are not different, any different from anyone else. I am not different from anyone else. We have, we all have the same two things happening. And there are only two things. Jesus boils it down. He, Jesus makes it very, very simple. There's only two things. Everyone has an ego that is constantly reminding you of your guilt, your sin, your, your unworthiness, um, why you could never go back to love. And everyone has the Holy Spirit, which is the longing for the return to love. And what we feed is what grows in power. The more we feed the Holy Spirit, the more we, the more we give power to the idea of the Holy Spirit, the more power it will have. And the more power we give to the ego, the more power that will have. Let's stop there and we will, we will continue. The consistency of means and end is next. Thank you so much for listening and uh, see you see you soon. Oh.